It's the penultimate Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I've got the appetite to see it all the way through to the end. To win is a dream at this stage. This is one tough competition. I want to stand up above the other guys. That's what the final's all about. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Christopher, Matt and Andy have faced some of the toughest challenges in the professional cooking world. In tonight's one-hour show, they'll face their biggest test yet. Right, are we ready to go? Yes, sir. Go. First, they will have to cater for an exclusive £60,000 gala dinner at the Burley Horse Trials. Leon, yeah. they're just sitting now. They're sitting early. We needed to get a shift on, yes? Come on, let's go. Come on, guys. Come on. Then they will face their most terrifying task cooking for eight of the world's greatest chefs, who between them boast an astonishing 16 Michelin stars. That was executed to perfection. I'm amazed by what you produce. If I was not on a diet, I would finish a dish. I still do think I've got what it takes, but I know that A, I've got to eliminate mistakes, and B, I've got to raise my game. I'm in the final, I've got a massive opportunity, so now that hunger for it is just trebled. I'm away from the family, but this has always been a dream. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Burley House is one of Britain's grandest stately homes. Every year it hosts one of the most prestigious events on the sporting and social calendar, the Burley Horse Trials. In just 24 hours, Matt, Andy and Christopher will cater for more than 200 at the competitors' opening banquet. There is no room for any error tomorrow. These people are expecting the best. This is a very, very big occasion indeed. This is where we really start to sort the men from the boys. It's taking it up from the home cook to the world of professional. To help them practice for Burley, they now face their first test. You have done fine dining before, and you have done volume before, but now it's about fine dining and volume. Gentlemen, let's cook. Three different types of canopies, 20 of each, that's 60 canopies. They've got one hour and 15 minutes. Today, we are going to test their timing, their organisational ability, their presentation, their taste buds, their skill. Comeback contestant Andy has shown true culinary talent with some ambitious and breathtaking dishes. I just think it looks outstanding. It's just very clever. That is almost alchemy but he can struggle with attention to detail. It really is a bit sloppy. And often takes his eye off the ball. I think it looks like a bit of a car accident. I need to stay really focused on raising my game and improving how I cook because I know that, you know, I need to do that to win. And if I don't, then someone else will. What are your canopies? For my cold one, I'm doing smoked eel on rye bread with creme fraiche and horseradish and then aubergine and onion bhajis. The sweet, I'm doing little puff pastry cases with vanilla cream and strawberries on top. Why have you put yourself under so much pressure today? We've all got to raise our games and just produce, you know, a higher level of food. I know, I know that your expectations are really high, so fingers crossed. And he's given Tom a huge amount of work to do. So much work to do, I'm concerned he's actually going to get it finished. Gentlemen, you are about halfway. Father of three, Matt, is passionate about foraging for ingredients. Now he wants to take it a step further. 
my ultimate ambition is to have a restaurant that does the sort of food that I love and my family to be an integral part of that. Uh, life's too short not to kind of follow your dreams. Some of his food has been totally inspirational. Now that, my friend, is what I like to eat. Wonderful flavours. Lovely. I have just tasted the meat and it is really superb. The meat is wonderful. I want to go in the kitchen and nick some more right now. <laughs> but his delivery can often let him down. It's not set, it's only holding together because it's frozen. Things do and have gone on. What are you going to cook for us? I'm doing you some mini jacket potatoes with goat's cheese and chive, some burnt creams, and some clams with a caper mayonnaise. You have given it a lot of thought. Yep. We can see that. Does that mean today this is possibly your round? What I really want to show you is that I can do this type of food, I can do the presentation and you like it. This, you know, I'm, I'm here to enjoy the finals, but this is about winning, and I'm here to win. Flavour combination's fine. How pretty can his big hands actually make those canopies? Twenty-four-year-old Christopher has a natural talent for beautifully presented modern British food. Very good, very accomplished dish. I think this is absolutely straight A's. I think it's absolutely perfect in every respect. But his inexperience is his greatest weakness. For me, the ravioli is a bit hard. It's a bit hard. This is literally just not enough time to do it all. I don't think I've cooked my best dishes yet, and I, I want to do that. I want to start showing them that I'm, you know, raising my game, and I, I am a, a great cook. Christopher, firstly, I'd like to know what your three canopies are. First, the hot canopies are kind of like a savoury. A fitter roll. Uh, the second one is courgette strip and it's stuffed with ricotta and uh, the sweet canapé is strawberries dipped in dark chocolate and amaretto. Masterchef the finals, strawberries dipped in chocolate. Um, you know I can't do three super all singing all dancing canapés in the time period so maybe you know that's my simpler out of the three. Would the uh, winner of Masterchef be able to do three super ones in the time allowed? On paper it may look fairly simple but they're going to taste good and, and that's what I'm out for. Courgettes wrapped around goat cheese and then strawberries dipped in chocolate. Yeah, it will get you through this realm, but it won't make you win MasterChef. He has to pull it out of the bag. He's got to start really cooking seriously if he wants to stay in this competition. You got 12 minutes, guys. That's all you got. With just minutes to go, Christopher has finished. You have just two minutes to get your stuff on the plates. That's it. Stop. OK, step away from the bench, please. After a rush to plate up, Andy has managed to make all of his smoked eel with horseradish on rye bread, mini aubergine bhajis, and strawberry and vanilla cream pastries topped with chocolate. Soft aubergine inside, crunchy, crispy on the outside. It's really lovely textures, really nice flavour. Very good. I think the most attractive of the three. And another very good flavour combination. Strawberries, cream, puff pastry, vanilla, fantastic. But I think it does show today that you had to rush the presentation at the end. You know, if you've got all the flavours right, adding that extra bit of care, that extra bit of um, presentation when you put things together makes a difference. 
and, and that's what I missed out today. Matt has made mini baked potatoes with goat's cheese, clams with a thyme flour caper mayonnaise, and mini creme brulees. I love the look of them because they're all lined up, they're all even, you understood what you had to do. As far as flavour goes, I like the flavour of goat's cheese and chives. It looks enticing and it's an intriguing array of flavours from such a little morsel. Very good. Great. You every so often create little things which produce flavour of the unexpected which are absolutely delightful and that is fantastic. It's a little mouthful of creme brulee. It's fantastic. It's cream, it's sugar crunch on top, but it's heavy with vanilla. Absolutely delightful. It means loads when you guys like it. That, you know, that's what I'm here for. Um, yeah. Has Christopher done enough to impress with his shoe pastry buns filled with ham and cheese? Ricotta rolled in raw courgette and strawberries dipped in chocolate and amaretto. I look down at your, your plates, they are ordered, they are organised, but they are not very inspirational. I think it's pleasant, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but there is nothing that picks me up by the ears and gives me a big wet kiss on the lips. Nothing. Little buns. They deliver exactly what they're supposed to deliver. Soft shoe bun, salty ham, fragrant sage, and they're nice. They're nice. Chocolate with a boozy hint of amaretto, marzipan. Good, it's nice. But you can easily afford yourself a little bit more flamboyancy. Get some rest, you are going to need it. Off you go. Today's task was about fine dining. It's also about our three finest understanding you can do volume beautifully. The one who had the biggest timing issue was Andy. He did struggle at the end. Maybe he was the most ambitious. Look, there's no doubting I love the flavour of Andy's food. It's just Andy's ability to deliver consistently, which is his issue. For me now, Matt is the one who is actually delivering that je ne sais quoi, that little extra something that takes food from the good to the memorable. Those clams were elegant, beautiful, and they delivered far above your expectation. That was the perfect example of a great canopy today. Great day for him. Chris, he delivered food with no issues with no problems, but that's not going to do him any good. It's a confidence thing. He's got to start to trust himself, trust in his ability, and know that he has got the time to do a bit more. He's got to take a risk. Today's task was only a taster of what's got to come next. Our guys have got to cook over 200 fine dining meals at one of the glitziest occasions in England. Whoever can really perform under that sort of pressure, that's the person that deserves the Master Chef title. I don't think I'm the best cook here, but I think what I want to show from here on in is that I've got the most potential and that I've learned the lessons. I really, really want this, and the, the competition is getting much tougher, and that makes you actually want it more, so, yeah, absolutely determined. I do think that maybe it is slipping out of my grasp a little bit, so I want to do something that wows the judges, and if that means taking a risk, then that's what I'm going to have to do. John, their heart is going to skip a beat when they see where they've got to perform. Wow, look at that.
Welcome to the absolute stunning surroundings of Burley House and Grounds. I mean, this set in itself is stunning enough, but Burley, of course, is also home to the world famous Burley Horse Trials. You are not only cooking for members of the British Olympic team, you are also cooking for members of the royal family. Tonight, it has to be precise, it has to be beautiful, and it has to be on time. This is no ordinary catering function, only the best will do. No room for error, gentlemen. Good luck. Off you go. It's mad. This is an absolutely crazy task. I knew it was going to be a tough one today, but you know, just hearing the numbers, the knowing what the quality of the food is going to have to be like is just kind of, oh my god. You know, I'm feel out of my depth. Very intimidating, and to do really fine dining. Yeah, I. Scared stiff. That's um, quite a challenge. That's an absolutely amazing location and very, probably by far the most daunting challenge yet. The finalists will be cooking in a marquee set in the heart of the horse trials. Their every move will be scrutinised by head chef Leon Smith. I can't stress how important tonight is. Everybody who's anybody is here tonight, OK? I've put together a menu specifically for this event. Quite complex food, lots of different components, lots of skills to be shown. Attention to detail is what is going to be the difference between a good meal and an excellent meal. OK? Are you ready for it? Yeah. yeah. Good. All right, come on. In exactly 10 hours, 200 people will be expecting a superb three-course meal. Matt's responsible for the starter. Herb rolled smoked salmon, a quenelle of crab, and poached mackerel fillets. He excelled in the canapé test, combining flavour and presentation. But can he do it again? My plate is quite a complex plate. There's effectively three different dishes on the one plate. Doing 200 times three dishes, all quite complex. Just got to hit it, just got to make the times, get it done. Tonight, he has to make those plates beautiful. After his disaster in the canapé test, can Christopher regain his confidence? He's cooking seared chicken breast and thigh with an onion puree, sautéed leeks, cabbage and fondant potatoes. Christopher desperately needs a big round today. If he can successfully do the main course, he has put himself right back in the MasterChef record. Some of the other rounds that I've gone through probably haven't come out on top. So, yeah, I'd like to prove myself today. Andy struggled to get his canapes out on time, and he can't afford a repeat today. He's making a dark chocolate tart, bramble jelly and vanilla buttermilk panna cotta, pistachio twill, and chocolate gnocchi. When we've done huge quantities before, it's been quite, you know, more rough and ready food. This is proper fine dining with these quantities, so. Yes, totally again. This is complex food for big numbers. This is a test of his concentration and focus. There's two hours gone, and the three-day Burley event is well underway. Matt will be first to serve, but already he's struggling with the portions of his crab quenelles. OK, right. I'm going to need to stop you a little bit. OK. So if we look at the first ones that we did for that size, they're growing as we go along. OK. Go through. Any that are too big, reject. Need to get a crack on. Because we're starting to lag behind. It's not an easy thing to do to get two of these the same, let alone 200. Christopher is also struggling to fillet 200 chicken breasts and thighs. You really do need to get a shift on with this, because this does take a long time. Yes, sir. Okay? That is your main priority, get that done, then we'll move on. To do each one of these chicken breasts has taken maybe a couple of minutes, and you know, if you do the maths and the fact that I've got probably about another 160 odd to go, then I'm going to still be doing this when this should be served. So. 
For his pudding, Andy has five different elements to get right. He can't afford to let his focus slip. We've got some kind of dirt in the bowl. Yeah. So you need to get rid of that. Yeah. Get some fresh cream. Yeah. Start again. OK. Yeah, you've got to be accurate. Desserts are all about, like, being precise. That means there is a lot of stuff to do early. Because things have got to set and... Um, important to get this done quickly. While the finalists struggle with their prep, tonight's guests are competing in the day's dressage. <laughs> including world eventing champion Zara Phillips. Things aren't happening quick enough, OK? You've got a lot to do still on here. You really need to get a shift on. With only three hours until service, Matt's finished his crab quenelles, but he's fallen behind with his mackerel. Complete different size again. You need to keep an eye on the size of the cut, yeah? Yeah. OK. I like it to be a nice, happy kitchen, but we're getting to the point now where I'm getting frustrated. Sure. All right? Let's get on with it. Matt's working hard, but fortunately, he's just got one gear. He needs to speed up. He's not grasped the concept of how much he's got left to do. So it's going to get to the point where we're going to have to throw more chefs at it. Christopher's picked up the pace. His chicken thighs are ready to cook, but he still has to do all the prep for his sautéed cabbage and leeks. OK, so you're about a third of the way through that then, yeah? Yeah, I am, Chef, yeah. OK, time check. You've been out of that now 25 minutes. OK. OK, just crack on. You need to get a lot faster. Right, where are we up to on the list? What have you got left to do? We need to do the tweels and the panna cotta. So you've still got a lot to do? Still got a lot to do, yeah. OK, so prioritise what you need to get done yeah. first. Andy is also under pressure. He has to cover his 200 glasses of bramble jelly with warm panna cotta mix and hope it sets in time. That will take a long time to set. OK, let's crack on. Outside, the day's events are winding down. has only one hour before he needs to begin plating his starter. We are very behind, though. Understand. So I'm going to have to say we're going to have to bring some more guys in and we're going to have to start giving you a lift. I don't okay. want it to get too late because we've still got 200 plates to lay out and get finished and built. Yep. Reinforcements arrive to help Matt. I don't want to be in a position where I have to take an element off the plate because I will not serve it if it's not perfect. Yeah, I behind. Speed, volume and quality, that's what we're struggling with today. Andy's chocolate tarts are ready, but he still needs to make and bake the pistachio twills. It's just a question of getting this done, then plating up. There's going to be a lot of plating up to do in advance, so um, still a lot to do. The guests arrive for their champagne reception. In under an hour, they will expect a superb three-course meal. Time is running out and Christopher has just started the huge job of sealing and cooking all his chicken breasts. He's got a lot to do still. He's still got about 150 chickens to get done, which takes a long, long time. There's loads of stuff going on, loads of pans on the go and everything. I'm sure I'll probably die once it's finished, but you get a buzz out of it. He's got loads to do, but he doesn't look daunted by the prospect. This could be that young man's day. There's now only 45 minutes to service. 
Despite his earlier problems, can Matt now pull it together and plate up 200 perfect starters? They are really intricate dishes, so he has to get himself organised. Is that one the same as the first one I did? No, it's not. No, so you need to be checking, you need to be moving yeah. stuff around, yeah? The last one's got to look exactly the same as the first one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please take your seat for dinner? Thank you. Yeah. They're just sitting now. They're sitting early. Okay, can you give me ten minutes? Right, Stuart, I want you to drizzle the lemon oil on. It needs a little bit of red on each one. No Jeff, it's time to go. With the pressure on, can Matt get the production line moving? Are we ready? Ready, Chef. Right, let's bring the stove stuff through, please. Come to me for dressing before you leave. We really need to get a shift on, yes? Matt has delivered. But what will the diners think of his herb rolled smoked salmon, quenelle of crab on a salad of beans, and poached mackerel fillets with fennel? The start was absolutely fantastic. It really was, yes. I thought the starter was quite impressive. An enormous plate, but I mean the the presentation was amazing. The crab was excellent. Love that. And uh, salmon was good. And I think everyone's quite happy with what's come out. I've only just finished. My mind's completely numb, to be honest. It was it was mad. Service came early, but the plates went out looking really good. So I'm pleased with that. <laughs> Leon, we're ready to go. First table, main course. Okay, guys, we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. It's Christopher's turn in the spotlight. All right, guys, let's make this a good one. Keep it nice and clean and tidy, guys, and the plates will stay that way. Come on, come on guys, come on. Okay, thank come you. on, Chris, keep it up. You're doing a really, really good job. Yeah, come yeah. on, guys, let's keep it nice and clean and tidy. We're doing well. That's what we to hear. Okay, let's move across, mate. Much better, guys. Despite his inexperience, up. Christopher is thriving under the pressure. Don't go too mad with the cabbage. Keep it nice and light. Yeah. Your next plate. Get rid of that. Yeah. Guys, just don't let it slip. One final push, guys. We're almost there. Come on. After more than 10 hours non-stop work, will Christopher impress with his roast chicken breast and thigh with fondant potatoes, leeks, cabbage and onion puree? I thought it was a, it was a nice concept. Obviously taking a lot of work to get it in around like that. Delicious chicken. I mean, there's only so many ways of doing chicken, but that was certainly very good. And the vegetables were, were very cleverly done. It was very, very nice. I was even eating the bones. The food looked good and all the plates came back fairly clean. And as tired as I am now, you know, if you said I've got to go and do another course, then yeah, I'd be up for it. Exhausted after hours of cooking, can Andy find the precision he needs to plate up 200 desserts? Andy, heads up. Come on, let's go. Let's move it. Thank you. Right, we're ready to go? Yes, sir. has made a dark chocolate tart with bramble jelly and vanilla panna cotta, chocolate gnocchi and a pistachio tweel. But can it compete with the others? Vanilla. That's what I call a good pudding. It looks fantastic. It can really be so greedy and have everything of it. It's absolutely lovely. I thought the pudding was delicious. I love I chocolate anyway, so for me, that was the perfect pudding. 
all the food went out. It was a real struggle at times, but yeah, really good feeling, really elated. The contestants have made it through this 12-hour marathon. It's been good learning for me, and I didn't fall completely on my face, so it hasn't been a disaster. But this is so far out of my comfort zone, it's not funny. But I managed to get a good plate of food out. I've never worked that hard in my entire life. Uh, I've never been so scared in my whole life, but then I've never had like that much fun and that much adrenaline and just a massive buzz. So yeah, you know, definitely got a chance for the title still, so I'm well happy. It's been like, I don't know how long, 10, 12 hours we've been working and it's absolutely flown by. I've barely blinked. So uh, yeah, it's an amazing experience. It's been a long day for the guys and they've, you know, they have managed and coped with it really, really well. They've had down times and they've also had, you know, great highs through it as well. I think you'll agree that our three chefs have done an unbelievable job. Yay! that sort of food for so many people. Fantastic. The food's been awesome and we're really privileged to have them here. This is a seriously, seriously mammoth task. There was some hairy moments. They did need a little bit of help, but it's easy to forget a couple of months ago those guys had never even stepped foot in a professional kitchen. Incredible. <laughs> Over the last seven weeks, Matt, Christopher and Andy have proved that they have the makings of professionals. But only one of them can become the MasterChef champion. The finishing line is within sight. I'm nervous, but excited about getting there, that I'm determined to do my best, whatever. I think I've got what it takes, but I know that A, I've got to eliminate mistakes, and B, I've got to raise my game. We're all in the final now. There's just so much more serious. I'm thinking about the prize at the end of it. Today, at the Five Star Langham Hotel, they will face a challenge that would terrify even the most seasoned professional. In exactly eight hours' time, they will have to serve some of the world's greatest chefs, including the legendary three-star Pierre Kaufman, two-star Michel Roux Jr. and the extraordinary Alain Darroze, one of France's most celebrated chefs. For any chef, this is absolute privilege at its best. To cook for eight chefs, 16 Michelin stars between them, that is unbelievable. John, this is a daunting prospect for anybody, but three amateurs, if that was me right now, I would be quaking in my boots. Nothing less than perfection is good enough for these people tonight. The finalists will cook a complex menu designed especially by head chef Andrew Turner. My expectations are top. No mistakes. So, let's crack on. They will each be responsible for cooking a single course of an incredibly complex menu. Christopher is cooking the starter. Seared scallops with caramelised cauliflower, savoury tweels, a licorice made of squid ink, pasta and scallop mousse, and black pudding with a caper and raisin sauce. It's way more complicated than anything that I've ever done before. And then with the added pressure of who I'm going to be cooking it for, just loaded on more pressure and more nerves. This is the sort of food that excites young Christopher. He loves elegant presentation. For Christopher, it's got to be about flavour. But as always, Christopher's biggest challenge is overcoming his inexperience. Mine, yours. You see, half yeah. the scallops left behind. OK. All right. We can't afford for you to make any mistakes. Andy is cooking the main course, a technical masterpiece. A rack of lamb with chicken mousse and a morel stew, 
deep fried lamb breast with red cabbage and grilled lamb's tongue, and a lamb suet pudding with fried sweetbreads and salsify. Absolutely loads and loads of elements, and to produce eight of those for eight professional Michelin star chefs just seems, yeah, impossible. He's a seriously ambitious young cook. Can he go all the way? Not if he doesn't really, really shine tonight. Cooking at this level requires absolute attention to detail. Look at the side of your pan. You scrape any of that yeah. into the cabbage and you're gonna taste it. You don't keep it clean, right? You're gonna have problems later on. Yes, chef. Matt is preparing the dessert, a delicate and technical dish of light and dark chocolate mousse with Pear William, a fresh mint sorbet and a liquid chocolate drop. This is a huge test of my presentation skills. There's some amazing elements to it, so, so yeah, this will be a real challenge for me. We saw Matt struggle at Burley. We saw what happened to him under pressure. He almost crumbled. Well, let's hope he has learnt all of those lessons and he can cope with tonight. I hope for Matt he's on the top of his game. Matt starts by making the mint sorbet. It requires absolute precision. Just make sure that you get everything out of these dishes. Right, that's really important. Yep. And let's see how that comes out. For them to be able to do this as a first off is a big ask. The contestants have now been cooking for three hours, but they will still need every remaining minute to complete the 30 complex processes in each dish. Christopher's next step is making the squid ink pasta. It's the ink that provides the moisture, so too much or too little, and the pasta won't work. Stop that. This might be a case of having to do this one again. It's too dry. Yeah. And the dough's not mixed, probably. So let's get rid of that. Pretend it didn't happen. Okay. Start again, and let's get it right. Uh, it's a shame, Chris has, you know, he's got all the ingredients together and I think he's probably gone and rushed at it. This is the last time that he has the opportunity to get it right. Meanwhile, Matt is beginning to layer his light and dark chocolate mousse. There's a lot of steps in each of the elements of the dish. So just trying to make sure I do it right, do it to the right level of quality and not, you know, not messing something up. But the real test will be whether they set. All right, guys, you've got three hours to completion. Yeah, so let's keep moving, yeah? Keep motivated. Heads up, heads on. Let's go. Andy is mixing his chicken mousse, but he's taken his eye off his morel stew. It's cooked for too long with disastrous results. Split the butter out of it so the fat's escaped. Any ideas how we're going to get that back? Um, cool it down, add cold butter to it, or not sure? I don't think that'll work. A tiny little bit of water and then slowly, 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 just add it back in. Slowly, 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 and reincorporate it. He's got another extra job that he's got to catch up on, so the pressure's really getting on him, actually. OK, guys, you need to double up the work rate, OK? There's just two hours until service, and it's Christopher's last chance to get his squid ink pasta right. Feel the texture? Yeah, definitely, yeah. All right, so that's your end result. OK. And that will roll out perfectly. take two hours to make pasta, something that should take me about 10 minutes. So at least that's one process that's been achieved, but I hope the rest of them don't take as long as we are not going to make it for service. Meanwhile, Andy has fallen well behind. He still has the painstaking task of French trimming eight lamb cutlets. 
I feel a bit stressed at the moment. I've, uh, I know I've got a lot to do and um, it's all pretty precise and I haven't got enough time. Andrew on the meets, struggling. I would say he's on the verge of uh, getting in the weeds. He's got to continue to push and push and push to try and make it to get the food up on time. I'm worried for him. After four hours in the freezer, it's make or break for Matt's light and dark chocolate mousse. It's good. Thank you, Chef. I'm pretty pleased with that. It could have gone horribly wrong. Out of ten, skill factor. All Matt's done there is a ten out of ten. He's held his nerve, but Matt has got the most complex bit of that dish coming up. He's got those little teardrop chocolates, and he's about to approach zero hour. Chocolate teardrops require skills that take pastry chefs years to master. Matt first has to take a thimble of liquid glucose, then pour molten chocolate into it. He then has to stretch the glucose to form the solid, fragile teardrop. You touched it. This is seriously difficult. Don't pick it up yet. That is so, so cool. I don't know about you, my heart is absolutely thumping. That is fantastic. There's now under an hour until service. Andy desperately needs to make up time. He's only just started making the moulds for his lamb suet puddings. We need to really push on, mate, yeah. You've got to get those steamed yet, and they take uh, three quarters of an hour, so if they're not ready in the next 20 minutes, yeah, you won't be able to use them. Yes, Chef. He needs to perfectly mould the suet pastry. Andrew on the meat section has fallen really, really now into the weeds, and I just don't think he's going to make it. You all right? Yeah, a bit stressed. Yeah, hold it together. You can do it. Yeah. Just got to hold your nerve. Yeah. By now, Andy should be adding the lamb filling. is in a right pickle here. If he doesn't speed up, and very, very quickly, Chef is going to have to step in. Into the steamer. You okay. need to get them in now. Yeah, yeah, Chef. It's 7 p.m. and the chefs arrive. They are the legendary Pierre Kaufman, a godfather of modern British food. Michelle Roux Jr. of Le Gavroche. Michael Keynes of Gidley Park. Elenda Rose of Elenda Rose and the Connaught. John Campbell of the Vineyard. Shane Osborne, executive chef of Pied à Terre. Eric Chaveau of The Capital, and Tom Kitchen, one of the youngest chefs ever to be awarded a Michelin star. This is what fine dining is all about. The next hour is going to make or break our contestants. Christopher now has just 20 minutes to complete and plate his starter. We need to move now because we're not going to make it, yeah? So come on. 
He first has to make eight paper-thin, savoury tweels without burning them. If the mix is too thick, they don't work. If it's too thin, it don't work. If it's too hot, it doesn't work. If it's too cold, it doesn't work. So they're tough to do, definitely. Then clean the pan again, put it that one in first. Yep. Don't panic. If they're not brown, Leave them be. Don't move the pan, don't shake the pan, yeah, yeah. just leave it, OK? OK. So now we need to move. Yeah, OK, sure. It's almost 7.30, and Christopher should be serving, but he's still finishing his scallops and slicing the licorice rolls. We are now officially behind, Three. Christopher. Yeah. Come on, chef. Come on, speed, 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 come on. Turn your black pudding, butter in there, a little bit of icing sugar, we're ready to go on that. Yeah, go. As quick as you can, yeah? Quick, quick, quick. Straight down, straight down. It's got to go. Two hands, two hands. Come on, two hands. Christopher, we are way behind. We are way, way behind. Come on, come on, push, 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 push. Call service, Christopher. Service, please. Go, chef. Service, please. We Service. What will these legendary chefs make of Christopher's starter? Of scallops with black pudding, cauliflower puree, licorice rolls, savoury tweels, and a raisin and caper sauce. I think it's a lovely dish, but this roll here lacks seasoning. Whoever's cooked this has certainly managed to get the caramelization on the scallop, so um, well done to them. For me, uh, it's, it's, for an amateur, it's a success. Uh oh. Evening. 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 Hi. First of all, I'd like to say well done because the food was beautifully presented and the scallops were just cooked perfectly. Thank you. So on that score, Top marks. The little licorice roll I found bland and uh, lacked not only seasoning but a little bit of zing. But the skill uh, on the plate for a novice, I think yes. you've done very, very well. Thank you. Um, it's been a great, great honour and a great pleasure, and I just thank you for taking time out. Bye -bye. There was mixed comments, but just to get one positive comment, I'd have been happy with that. So, um, all in all, I'm pretty chuffed, yeah. Andy. Yes, yeah. Uh, pressure's on you now. Yes, yeah. yeah. Back in the kitchen, the late running starter has helped Andy make up time. Come on, quickly, Chef. Chef, come on, like your life depended on it. But he still has to cook his lamb cutlets to absolute perfection. We get that wrong, dish is ruined. Yeah. All right? And the other one, come on. You got two hands, use them. Come on. But he's still pushing it quite fine. It's quite a fine line between whether or not he makes the service or not. Five minutes. Five minutes from now, Andrea. Andy now has to bring the five elements of his lamb dish together. Let's get on a plate then. Come on, chef. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah. You want to be ahead of the game on this one? You've been behind all day. Come on. Come on, need to move still, yeah? So come on, go, let's go, come on. Three, yeah? That's it, not so pretty about it. Come on, be confident, put it on the plate. Lamb tongue on. Oh, yes. Rock and roll, baby. Service, please. Okay, go. Will Andy's lamb cutlets with morel stew, deep-fried lamb's breast with grilled lamb's tongue, and lamb suet pudding with sweetbreads and salsify impress the chefs?
all of us, I have to be pretty impressed that the level of, of skill level shown has been pretty impressive. The lamb's cooked beautifully well, and he's done a good job, very good job. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of chefs cooking in, in Britain today who wouldn't know how to do all the different components of this dish. So I think they've done incredibly well. I ate mine, and I think that's the big, best compliment I can pay to the dish. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hello, Andy. First of all, well done, because that is not easy. There's a lot going on that plate, and I think even for one of us, that would have been pretty difficult. Thank you. I've seen people with 10, 15 years' experience not do it as good as you have. My meat was perfect. There were some very, very good skills. The butchery was fantastic. I think you've done a very good job. You should be pleased with yourself. I'm amazed by what you produce. Clearly, just great skill. Totally appreciate your comments. And today has been, yeah, a real challenge. And, um, you know, there are moments today when I was really up against it, but, yeah, I've enjoyed the experience. So thank you. comments in there and just totally an unbelievable experience but yeah it'll take quite a while for that last half an hour to sink in that's it okay so the main course is gone yeah the dessert's down to you this is Matt's ultimate test. Will the man who started the competition with the heaviest of hands be able to master the delicate presentation required? Push, speed, energy, accuracy. To be honest, I wouldn't really serve them. I don't want to say you didn't do these, Gwinnells, right? So I want eight, and I want eight perfect ones. With minutes to go, can Matt remould perfect Quinnells? Two minutes and send. That's good, mate, that's good. Okay, once they blow towards, we start to send. Okay, you need to get the other four, yeah? Come on. We'll go at the same time, so come on. Come on, mate. Wait, chef. Oh, well done. Has Matt overcome his biggest weakness? with his dark and light chocolate mousse with Pear William, fresh mint sorbet and a chocolate teardrop. The mousse is brilliant. Yes. The white mousse is absolutely perfect. The execution is perfect. Mm. Finesse on that, the finish, yeah. Yeah. the little chocolate with the oil inside was absolutely perfect. If I was not on a diet, that would finish a dish. <laughs> yeah, sure. The canals were actually very well prepared, I thought. They looked, yeah. every, all of, everybody's canal on the plate looked perfect. identical. Yeah. So I think he did a good job there. It's, it's perfectly done. Bravo, chef. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Right, Matt. Uh, there's a general consensus around the table that uh, it, it has been a success. Your canals were beautifully shaped, uh, and it was a very well executed dessert. Do you do pastry normally? No, not at all. If you've never really done much pastry and you've produ produced a mousse like that and all the other little details, then you should be very proud of yourself. One thing I must say, it's just beautifully presented. Thank you. That's all I want to hear from you. And there's pretty much empty plates, which says it as well, so thank you very much. I think we're all really very, very impressed with you. Thanks. Goodbye. The 
feedback was all positive, which I, I guess I was waiting for them to give give some criticism, and none that I heard. So you know, cool. I'm yeah, that'll do. Yeah, yeah. If I don't win the final, that'll do. This is a day these guys are going to remember for a long, long time. I am very, very proud of them. For these three amateurs, it has been the hardest two days of this competition. Even though he can take his eye off the ball, Andy's ambition and incredible skill produces some of the best food seen on MasterChef. I desperately want to, to win MasterChef and I'll be desperately disappointed if if I don't. Matt has battled under pressure, but when he gets it right, his exceptional and truly inspirational food would outshine many a professional. This is what I want to do, this is what I will do, and today took me a big jump towards that. Christopher is beginning to overcome his inexperience. And this new confidence is reflected in some truly great and admired dishes. To go through all this and come out the other end as, as a, a runner-up um, is something I don't really want to think about. Well, that's a good night's work, guys. Next time, it's do or die for these three finalists. First, they're sent to Europe to cook in some of the greatest restaurants in the world. Just phenomenal, like nothing I've ever seen. Please don't mess it up. It's all my worst nightmares, yeah. Then it's time to produce their final sublime three-course menu, which will decide who will become MasterChef champion. It's the sort of dish you would expect in a Michelin-style restaurant. My heart's thumping because I like it. <laughs>